Just one time I like to feed him to school. on the shoulder, kind of apologetic-like, and asked if he could get off, so I let him. What's the matter with him? He's dead, isn't he? Better call an ambulance. Somebody call an Mr. Collier, Mr. Hart's Are expecting. Are you sure he was a student here? Yes. Hello, Frank. Neither of you knew the boy. No. Ned, I think he was in my math class last year. Peggy, if you have the Evans file, would you bring it in, please? 
Thank you, Mr. Schneider. It's funny. The boy never even said he felt bad. Here it is. Oh, thanks, Peggy. Could you take care of these, please? All right. What time is that board meeting? You're late for it now, sir. Hmm. Frank, I thought you said you hardly even knew the boy. What do you mean? Well, he's written here that you're his favorite teacher. His favorite teacher? Me? That's what it says. Well, there were a couple of instances when I helped him with his homework, but... At least you remember talking with him. That's more than anybody else. Did he have a drug problem? I don't know. I told you I didn't spend that much time with him. I see. Wish I could be of more help. As a matter of fact, you can. Somebody has to contact the parents. Oh, now, wait a minute. You're the principal. Don't you think you or Mr. Carlin... I've got to be in a board meeting all day. Besides, I don't even remember seeing the boy. You at least knew him. Oh, well, what about my classes? We'll cover your classes. And incidentally, we'll need a small obituary for the school paper. You can use my office. Peggy will be glad to help. And, uh, by the way, I'll arrange for a delegation from the school to attend the boy's funeral. And thank you very much, Frank. I really appreciate this. Any ideas? Well, here's the address. 4315 Randolph Road, Mr. and Mrs. Nathan Tucker. Stepfather? Mm-hmm. Cliff was a good boy. I'm sure he was. Never complained. Never even said he was sick. Never said nothing about anything since the day I moved in. I give that boy everything I could, but he could just never catch on. If he wouldn't have been so dumb, he'd have told us he wasn't feeling good. Cliff wasn't dumb. Wasn't dumb? I'm sorry Cliff's dead. But he could never do one thing right, and you know it. Mister, I've got all this work to do around here. The other day, when we had that snow... Beautiful shot by 22 Willemitzer. That basket just made him top score for his team. Do you shovel them walks? Uh, I forgot. Oh, you forgot. I tell you to go out and shovel those walks. You come in and you say, I forgot. Where you been for two hours? Just work for a walk. For two hours? Dummy, went for a walk for two hours. Doing what? Just thinking. Oh. What's that in your hand there? It's a willow. It's already bedding. It's not even spring yet. A willow. I ask you to please go out and shovel the walks. And you spend two hours thinking about willows. When are you going to start using that head of yours for something besides keeping your ears apart? Do good kid. And she says he wasn't dumb. I should have spent more time with him. So you didn't? Now let it be. That's what you've always wanted, isn't it, Harry? Hey, where are you going? To see my son. What about my breakfast? How's it coming? Well, Cliff Evans was Caucasian, never legally adopted by stepfather, and has a steady list of bad grades. That's the obituary? That's the record. As far as school goes, he appears never to have done anything. No clubs, no sports, no activities at all. No friends or students that knew him? None that admit it. You're kidding. Nope. From the record, Cliff was a real zero, a cipher. Oh, I don't envy your job. You know, though, there's something I just can't get out of my head. Cliff Evans appears to have started out a normal, healthy, and happy boy. Look, first grade teacher, sweet, shy child. Second grade, timid, eager, wants to learn. 
He's a nice looking boy. Here's a poem he wrote in the second grade. My poem about frogs by Cliff Evans. I like frogs. They sit on great big logs. They jump real high up to the sky. I wish I could jump high like a frog. sound like he was always a zero. No, he started out just about like every other kid, but... Well, what happened? Messed up home? I'm sure that was part of it, but it's got to be more. Third grade. Cliff won't talk. Uncooperative, slow learner. That's about the same time Cliff's mother and father are having trouble. Good. That's much improved. That's right, you're doing fine. Cliff, what are you daydreaming about today? Oh, you always got your mind on something else. Cliff, you've got to try harder. You know you're the slowest one in the class. Do you want some help after school? Do you want me to have your parents in for a conference? They won't come. Why not? They're getting a divorce. People seem to live up to what other people think of them. Slow learner. The fourth grade teacher says, low achiever. Doesn't mix well with other children. <laughs> I've seen how that happens.
the rest of his reports like that? It's all beginning to fit, isn't it? Once he was labeled, everybody else followed. Stubborn, daydreamer, slow learner, dull. Not one of them looked past that third grade remark to find any real answers. No wonder Cliff had a problem. Do you have my eighth grade report? Yes, it's right there. Introverted, lacks ambition, socially unskilled. Well, it doesn't look like I helped any more than the rest, does it, Peggy? What do you mean? You have a son, don't you? Yes. Suppose he lived in a broken home, was never legally adopted, was totally ignored. How would he feel? That's not a very pleasant thought. Now, add to this six or seven hours a day spent in school where he gets the impression that he's slow and dumb. Oh, Mr. Collier, I don't think teachers intend to treat students that way. Maybe not consciously, Peggy, but... I wonder. Working pretty late. Just been looking through the Cliff Evans file. We got the coroner's report. They were really puzzled. Said there was nothing wrong that they could tell. The heart uh, just stopped beating. Heart failure. That's okay for the record, but there's more to it than that. What? I think Cliff was erased. Little by little. Family, schoolmates, teachers, Everyone reduced him to a zero. Finally, he just went away. Hmm. Low IQ. Right. This year it was listed as 83, way down. But in the third grade, it was recorded at 106. It didn't even go under 100 until the seventh grade. OK. A negative environment can significantly lower an IQ over a period of time. But what's that got to do with the boy's death? Even shy, timid children have resilience. It takes time to break them. Gradually, it happened. And I helped. Me, his favorite teacher. Oh, I did the best I could to show Cliff how to solve mathematical problems. But like everyone else, and the things that really mattered, and making him feel like a worthwhile human being, I kept subtracting. Frank. A lot of people are treated worse than Cliff, and they survive. Some do, some don't. Do you remember that study on babies and orphanages? Yeah. They were given all the food and physical care they needed. The mortality rate was incredible. Well-fed babies turned their faces to the wall and died. When the doctors finally caught on, they prescribed along with the food and blankets. A little attention, a little love. Cliff held on for a long time. Finally, he just turned his face to the wall, too. Just turned his face to the wall and died. I see what you mean. In a way, we all share the blame. What are we going to do about it? What can we do? Maybe a little attention, a little love. Excuse me, are you Mr. Collier? Yes, I am. Why? Well, I was wondering if I could talk to you for a minute. Look, son, I, I have a lot on my mind right now. Could we make it some other time? Yeah.
Oh, wait a minute. What did you say your name was? My name is Leroy Jones, and I'm going to be in your math class next spring. Uh-huh. And I was wondering if you could give me some help. At that moment, I resolved never to forget Cliff Evans. He'll be my challenge from now on. Each September, as I look at the unfamiliar faces, I'll look for veiled eyes in an alien world. I've promised myself I may not do anything else for them, but not one of them is going to come out of my class a nobody, a zero.